All right, so the uh, fly that I'm going to be tying for you guys today is a woolly bugger. Uh, this particular version is going to be tied on a size 2 hook. I uh, got a little weight that I'm going to add to it by putting this cone head on it. Uh, with the woolly bugger, there are definitely hundreds, if not thousands, of variations on it from size to color uh, to weight. I particularly like this one because it can be used both for trout um, and for bass. Uh, it's a really good uh, fly to have in your um, fly box. So uh, what I did was I laid down a layer of thread. I'm using brown 6 um unit thread. And then I'm going to take some marabou. I've got brown marabou. I'm going to use this section right in here, about 2 inches of it. So I'm going to pinch that together. Cut this section out. And as far as length goes, I just want it to be a little bit longer than the body. Uh, so I'll set that on top. Okay, I'll go ahead and tie in that portion of it. Now a lot of people will go ahead and cut this out. Um, I do like to go ahead and keep it on there um, as your uh, you, as you're fishing this fly, it's going to absorb some water. It's going to add a little more weight to it, um, and I just I prefer to do that. Uh, but you're more than welcome to remove the excess um, if you'd like. Okay, the next material that I'm going to be tying in is uh, some crystal flash, and I like to do about. Um, about three or four, in this case I'm going to go with four uh, strands of it. And so what I'll do is I'll hold it over the side here. And I like it to be on the side a little closer, a little bit closer to the top. And I'll tie that in with one wrap. And the reason I just do one wrap, I leave myself a little bit extra here. And if I don't like the positioning of it, I can certainly adjust it to exactly the location that I want. And then with my second wrap, I can go ahead a little bit tighter and just hold it in place there. What you want to do then is gently pull back on the crystal flash measure to about the end of your feathers. And go ahead and cut that off. I'm going to come over to the other side here. And again, we're just going to do one wrap. Get it about to where it needs to be, right about there. And actually, it looks like I caught a piece, so I'm going to undo it. Uh, sometimes that happens when we're tying, you know. Things don't always go exactly as planned. I think I'll go ahead with two wraps, two loose wraps instead of just that one this time. There we go. Oh, it's the positioning is a little better, so I'll go ahead and take my tight wraps here. And same thing, you want to gently just pull back and cut it. And these we don't have to tie in. We'll just go ahead and trim those out. Clean up a little bit here, and I'm going to go ahead and tie in another section of marabou. And again, we'll go with this about two inches of it. Make sure that it lines up uh, as far as the length goes with. The rest of your tail, that nah, looks about right. Hold it nice and tight. Make one loose wrap and then I like to tighten it up. Oops. There we go. I'll bring this forward. And go ahead and tie this in as well.
All right, now for the body. Um, what I'm going to be using is some orange chenille. I just picked this up at a local fly shop here in Tennessee. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unwrap about two and a half segments of it here. I find that with this size, I don't really need much more than that. And again, uh, just for cost effectiveness, you don't want to cut out more than you really need. I'll tie that in there. Okay. And the next thing, we've got some rooster feathers here. I'm just going to take a piece of it out, or one of the feathers out, excuse me. Now usually uh, when you're working with hackle you want it to be fairly long. Uh, in this case, this, these are the only uh, pieces of hackle that I have. Uh, so the feather itself isn't very long. Uh, this is furnace hackle. It's a little darker in the center, gets lighter towards the outside. So we're going to prep it. Like I was saying earlier, uh, I don't have anything um, that's any feathers that are longer. Um, so I'm just using what I have. All right, we got it prepped. Tie in the tip of it here, and uh, oops, there we go. All right, now we're going to work our thread towards the front of the hook. Go ahead and catch any loose fibers that are sitting there. And take our chenille, make sure we're clearing uh, any kind of marabou or fibers from the hackle away. And we're going to start wrapping it around the body. Uh, you want the wraps to be relatively tight, not too tight, uh, but not too loose either. If they are loose, when you start casting, they'll move around and then you'll end up with little awkward segments where the inside of the fly is showing and really don't want that. So. Again, just nice and neat and tied one after the other here. Okay, now once I get to the head, what I like to do is make some really tight wraps. What that's going to do is force the chenille to go underneath the cap here. And that's going to prevent it from moving around as much. It still might move around a little bit, but not nearly as much as it would had we not uh, done this. Okay, that'll be good right there. Make a couple of wraps. Catch that on there. And it doesn't have to look real pretty because I am going to use some dubbing at the head. And we'll get to that later. So it doesn't have to look real nice and neat for now. Then what you want to do is take some hackle pliers. Grab onto your piece of hackle here. And we're going to start winding it around the body. And since the feather is kind of short, I'm going to make sure that my segments are a little bit larger. And that's just to give me um, a good, good even look to the fly um, and being able to utilize the whole feather. So, whoops. And that might happen, that's okay. You just reset and do it all over again. No problem. I know when stuff like that happens, uh, we're all very prone to say some not so nice things in our head, but uh, just try to keep a cool head about you. It'll make this hobby a little bit more uh, enjoyable. Alright, so I've caught that in there. I can come through with a pair of scissors and um, get rid of this. And again, try to be careful. Don't don't cut your thread because um, again, it'll it'll be very frustrating. So we'll go ahead and clean everything up. Okay. Uh, now what I'm going to use for the dubbing at the front 
is I've got um, again the same kind of dubbing that I used when I made the uh, Royal Gesture Nymph. Uh, it's a combination of ultra fine dubbing and dark yellow, some red ostrich hurl, and then some crystal flash. I've taken that all, kind of blended it together, and um, I just like the way it looks. It's got a very a nice coloration to it and I like to put this around the head of this particular pattern uh, to imitate uh, gills so we'll just wrap that around there go and take our whip finish Okay. Now since uh, we are going to be uh, casting this pretty hard, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put two, go uh, whip finish it twice, and that's just for some added security there so it doesn't fall apart on us. Alright, now you can certainly um, just cut your thread right here and be done with it. Um, however, what I like to do uh, just to kind of jazz up the fly a little bit more. I uh, have these crazy eyes here. I bought these at a Hobby Lobby. I think they were on sale for 99 cents. Uh, so I went ahead and I bought it. And um, when I started tying this particular pattern, um, started adding them in. And it just makes the, the fly look a little bit um, more realistic. So what I'm going to do here is turn the fly onto its side, and, and I apologize if this comes out of the view of the camera, but what I'm going to do is just uh, put some super glue, and I put it directly on the uh, cone head. Okay. Now the type of super glue that I'm using is a gel. Uh, it's not that runny stuff uh, and so I find that it um, works a little bit better. It gives you a little bit more time to play around with the material. It doesn't soak into the material as fast so um, if you can uh, try to get your hands on some of that stuff. Okay so we've set the eyes in place. Um, try to make them as even as possible but if not that you know that's fine. Uh, but this is it. This is the finished uh, product here. You got a woolly bugger. Again, a uh, really good fly for trout and for bass. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. As always, um, I want to thank you for watching it. If you like what you see, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be posting uh, videos periodically. Uh, so thank you again for watching, and good luck out there.